Hey guys, it's Ted with HD Piano. Here's how to play the main riff for Nobody's Love by Maroon 5. Three, four. That's it. So it just repeats from there. If you can learn this main riff, you're going to be able to play along with the entire song, because uh, this is really all that happens in the keys part in the song. Um, in my lesson, I will give one other lesson section for you guys, um, just to add in some little bonus parts um, from other parts of the song, like the melody um, and the bass line. But this keys part that I'm going to teach you here is, is really what you hear on the recording. So we're going to cover a lot of ground really fast. And one thing you'll notice about this lesson compared to other lessons is that I'm playing an electric piano sound. So if you have the option, if you're on an electronic keyboard and you can choose the electric piano sound to sound more similar to mine, you can go ahead and do that. We're kind of matching the recording here. If not, this will totally work on an acoustic piano as well. So you notice we have a lot of black keys in this song, and it's a great song to learn if you're ever intimidated by black keys, because uh, I want you to notice that they're really easy to play physically. And I actually like to talk about how they're the, the, the landmarks of the piano keyboard. They're really how we find our way around. So we're starting on this G flat major chord, and it's a G flat add two chord. Here's the two that we're adding. It's both the finger two, one, two, three, four, five, right? Those are our finger numbers. So this is finger two, and it's also the two of the chord. One, two, three, four, five. So that's our right hand, and then our left hand is going to be on G flat and D flat. And as we move on from here, our left hand stays where it is but our right hand's gonna lead up to this chord. So this is where we're leading into in the right hand. And this is a G flat major inversion here. But we're gonna lead in with G flat, A flat. And you notice the fingers I'm using, three, four. And I use those so that I can land on this chord with one, three, and five. So that'll go like this. And you want to try that, um, just leading in that way. You can take it a lot slower if you need to. The fun challenge there is connecting these notes into the top note of the chord, right? So once you've got that, the next chord after that is very similar. We're just moving the very top two notes down to get a D flat major chord over this G flat. So here's what we have so far. Three, four, G flat, two, three, four, one, two, E, and a three, E, and a four. So that's the first phrase. Here's our next phrase. We play a simple D flat major chord with the right hand in an inversion. So here's what that looks like. And you notice, as I mentioned, we're so much on the black keys. The only white key we've used so far is this F. Right? Otherwise, everything has been black keys. Okay, so here's the top of the second phrase where we're starting on D flat. And then this time, the chord that we're going to lead into with our little pickup is this chord. So our left hand goes to two notes again. We have B flat and F. And our right hand stays on the same D flat major shape that we had before. So here's this chord. And then we need to walk down. And what happens is the left hand moves both notes down. Like that. <laughs> And then the right hand follows it. The melody of the right hand is the same, right? 
but we have a different chord underneath. We're going down to this A flat major shape. Okay, so once more, here's that whole second phrase, starting on the D flat major chord. We go three, four, one, two, three, four, one E and a two E and a three E and a four. And that leads us back into the top. So this is just a four measure phrase and you've already covered the whole thing if you've made it this far. Um, if you made it this far, you really have learned the whole song. Um, so congratulations. Um, and now what's great about a song like this where you just have one riff that you play over and over again is you can really focus on the details, right? Any little uh, improvement you make to how musical this sounds, it's gonna pay off over the whole song. So one thing I want you to notice is the pedaling. The way that I'm pedaling this, is that every new chord gets a pedal change. Oop. Like that. <laughs> and uh, the reason that I'm doing that is not only that the, the chord sound changes with every chord, um, but also if you change on these and it's gonna help clear out the sound of those pickups. Um, and it's always something that we wanna listen for. When, you're, when we're using the sustain pedal, um, if we have like a melody line and we hold out the sustain pedal all through it, it can sound really cool to have that kind of washy sound, right? Uh, but if we don't want it, if we want more clarity, then we're gonna wanna change the pedal um, within or immediately after a melody like that. Okay, so slowly, I'm gonna play this through once more, and uh, if you wanna watch closely where I'm changing the pedal, you know, along with using your ears to listen to how this, the sound is being held out. You can also look visually on our software. You can see the light and dark regions, right? Pedal down, pedal up, pedal down, pedal up, and you can see what I'm doing here. So I'll take it nice and slow. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, change. Change, change, two, three, four, one, two, change, change. And I hope that wasn't misleading with my, my voice. I, I was saying change um, actually a little late on some of those because really I was changing with the chord every time. That's the important part. Um, and what I mean by that, the changing with the chord, um, you've, you may have heard me talk about this before. Um, the idea with the sustain pedal is that as we play down with our hand, the sustain pedal actually lifts at that same moment. So it's this contrary motion between the hand and the foot. Um, so your, your pedal is probably already down if you're playing a song with sustain pedal. So the pedal's down, I play and lift the sustain pedal and then immediately put it back down. Lift, back down, lift, back down. And that's what we mean when we talk about changing the sustain pedal. Okay, great job on part one. If you're on hdpiano.com already, you can click on the next video. If you're not, head on over so you can keep going with this song. If there's another song you want to learn, send us your ideas at requests.hdpiano.com. You can follow us on social media for a heads up about new lessons. And if you're on YouTube, drop us a comment because we love hearing from you. I'm Ted with hdpiano.com. Until next time.